You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme, the divers in Thailand finding a new lease of life for discarded fishing gear littering our oceans. The second Extreme E race takes place this weekend in Senegal. I'll be speaking to British driver Jamie Chadwick about how the event is raising awareness of climate change. And music legend Gary Newman on the climate inspiration behind his latest album. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those developing the solutions. Well, coming up, the new app aiming to use citizen scientists to track insect populations. But we're starting today looking at ghost nets. That's the term for fishing equipment lost or discarded in the sea and it's a growing problem. Up to a million tonnes of abandoned fishing nets enter the world's oceans every year. The plastic-based gear can take up to 600 years to break down, shedding microplastics as it degrades. And it makes up half of the world's largest collection of marine debris floating in the Pacific Ocean. Over 150,000 seals and cetaceans, that's whales, dolphins and porpoises, are estimated to be killed annually by lost fishing equipment, along with thousands of seabirds, turtles and sharks. But now divers in Thailand are trying to turn the problem of discarded gear into a solution, as our Southeast Asia correspondent Siobhan Robbins reports. These divers in Thailand are on a mission. Part cleanup, part rescue. And this is their target. The thousands of tons of old fishing nets, dubbed ghost nets, littering the ocean every year. Ghost nets are actually really dangerous because once they are fallen into the ocean, they can stay afloat for decades. So either marine animal will be entrapped there or um, they will digest those nets. Discarded fishing gear is one of the deadliest forms of ocean plastic pollution, harming 66% of marine mammal species. The divers collect and measure the ghost nets, 47 fishing communities across Thailand are doing the same. This is a huge problem. We've swum about 10 minutes and we've already found our first net. And around 50,000 small fishermen carry these alone in Thailand. The amount that are littering the ocean floor is still unknown. Back on the land, the nets are separated and cleaned. So what we can see here is clearly a dead individual. There's no animal left inside. They're then recycled, some turned into COVID visors, but they keep on mounting up. We have the Band-Aid solution at the beginning, which is to actively remove the nets. That deals with the symptom. It prevents further things from getting entangled. Um, the finding the source of the problem is another matter entirely. But they're not giving up. Scientists and campaigners will log every ghost net they spot in the hope they finally rid the sea of this deadly rubbish. Siobhan Robbins, Sky News, Thailand. A new campaign has been launched to encourage small businesses to cut their emissions to help the UK reach its net zero goal by 2050. They're being asked to make small changes such as switching to energy saving light bulbs, as well as bigger moves such as investing in electric vehicles. Our political correspondent Joe Pike explains more. Well, the reason the government are focusing on the UK's small businesses is because they employ about 60% of the UK workforce and contribute £2.2 trillion to the economy. This seems to be an attempt by government ministers to try and help uh, smaller businesses and micro-businesses understand their emissions and start to put together a plan to tackle them. Small practical steps at first. Uh, they mention uh, using energy-saving light bulbs, uh, more sustainable forms of transport, and also think about more sustainable forms of packaging if companies are producing some form of product. Now, you might think towards the end of a pandemic, many businesses will just be trying to uh, survive, trying to break even, let alone think about moving towards net zero. But actually, the Federation of Small Businesses has said that this is a moment to look to the future, and now is the time to start taking the first steps towards net zero.
In today's other climate news, from next week, drivers of high-polluting cars will have to pay £8 to travel into the centre of Birmingham. The launch of the clean air zone will see older vehicles that don't meet emission standards charged for driving within certain areas. It's estimated around 900 people in Birmingham die early each year from air pollution. The RAC is developing new technology to help out-of-charge electric cars. The firm's working with specialist engineers to fit its patrol vans with lightweight electric chargers capable of getting flat EVs back up and running. It hopes to have 200 of its vans equipped with the chargers by the end of this year. Sailors taking part in tomorrow's Ocean Race Europe will collect data on climate change as they compete. The teams will carry scientific equipment on board, take samples of microplastics, measure CO2 levels and water temperatures. The data will help scientists study the impact humans had on the seas. Drivers are being asked to count bugs to help scientists understand the UK's insect population. The charity Bug Life has launched a new app which lets users record the number of bugs squashed on their car number plate after going on a journey. There's evidence that insects are declining because of habitat loss and pesticides. And the Tree Council has launched a campaign urging people to look after their hedgerows, which they say are vital in the fight against climate change. It's estimated every year a hedgerow can absorb the carbon produced by a car travelling over 1,000 kilometres. Now, the second race in the new International Extreme E Racing Series is taking place this weekend. It's all about using electric SUV racing to try and improve innovations in electric car technology. And the five remote race locations have been chosen to highlight the impacts of climate change and human interference and to support local community projects. Now, this weekend's race is in Senegal, where the spectacular Atlantic coastline is threatened by the impact of warming oceans and and sea level rises. Well, joining me now from Lac Rose is Jamie Chadwick, who's a driver for the Veloce team. Uh, welcome to you. So how does driving on the Senegalese coast in an electric car, how different is that to what you're used to? Oh. <laughs> it's very different to anything I'm used to. Um, I come from a circuit racing world. So um, yeah, just the off-road element is a big difference for me. But yeah, to be racing along the ocean front in Senegal is um, something completely uh, new for, for me especially. So it's really exciting and yeah, I'm really enjoying the challenge. And why are you racing there in Senegal? What issues are you trying to highlight? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously quite a few issues um, that we've noticed here in, in Senegal. Obviously, the sea levels rising, the warming pollution. Um, also, the plastic pollution is something that has become even more uh, noticeable ever since we've been here. So, um, yeah, it's great that we can come to these locations, um, educate where we can, but also hopefully put on a spectacular motor race. And what inspired you to get involved in the first place? Um, I think from my point of view, um, like I said, as a racing driver, we never really had the opportunity to kind of make change or use our platform um, for any sort of Thing else other than um, the driving. So to have this opportunity to promote both climate change and also gender equality, all the teams have one male driver and one female driver is um, something that I'm really proud to be a part of. And it's just so much uh, different to anything I've done before, which is, uh, yeah, really exciting. And I think you've already tested out the course there in Senegal. How did you find it? Yeah, I've not actually been on track yet. I'm out this afternoon, so I'll let you know. But I've got it on the background now, and it looks to be an amazing track. You know, we're going right down the ocean front um, over a lot of dunes, and it looks spectacular. So I'm really looking forward to it. Jamie Chadwick, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now, music can be a powerful force for change. One person hoping his latest album will make a difference to how people see the world is Gary Newman. Intruder looks at climate change from the planet's point of view, expressing what he imagines the Earth must be feeling at the moment. Well, earlier I spoke to Gary Newman and started by asking what the album is all about. The new one takes a point of view of the, the planet itself. If the planet could speak, what would it say? How would it articulate the way that it feels? Does it feel angry? Is it hurt, disillusioned? Does, does it feel betrayed? You know, it, uh, but importantly, is it fighting back? Has it been fighting back for some time and we just haven't realised it? Um, that's really the album in a nutshell. 
if you can change people's minds, you, you can therefore encourage them in the way that they may vote, um, in the way they talk to their friends, which may encourage them to think differently. And, you know, and by sort of small measures, you, you, you create a direction. You, you, if people vote a certain way, it, it's, it sends a very strong signal as to what they want the future to be and what they want their leaders to be or, or want them to do. And obviously you feel inspired to, to express yourself, but do you think music can make a difference in changing people's minds? What role can it play in influencing people? Well, I think it can. You know, I, I don't know that how it's it's like super powerful. Or I don't think it's the, you know the, certainly not the protest movement that it was you know a few decades back. I don't know that it has a, a great deal of power, but it, it can certainly have some bring some bearing. It can bring some interest to it. And I've been talking about Intruder now for months. You know, particularly keen in the last few weeks or so. And all I'm talking about is climate change. So even people that don't like the album don't like me you know we're still making that noise we're doing it now you know we're talking about something that people need to be talking about and that's a good thing you know even if the album itself isn't you know sort of dies a death and nobody buys it you know the fact that we're here talking about it is worthwhile it was worth making it for this alone that's it for today's show, but you can get your climate fix over the weekend with our podcast. And on this week's episode, we look at how court cases can be used to fight climate change. That's on Climatecast and it's available wherever you normally get your podcasts from. And on our weekly digital show, we go behind the scenes of Adam Parsons' investigation into Poland's coal pollution dilemma. That's available on Sky News social channels, our app and our website. Thanks for watching. We're taking a break at the start of next week, but we'll be back at our usual time on Thursday. See you then.